The life we receive in Christ, the life we, re we, we receive in Christ, uh, the blessings that come with that life is released through knowledge. Did you get that? The blessings that come with the Zoe life is released through knowledge. So here's my phone. I would always give this instruction. This is my phone. And how many of you know that um, I believe this is a good phone? Am I right? Talk to me, Americans. All right. So if you gave me a gift of this phone, you gave me potential for efficiency. Am I right on that? Potential for efficiency. This phone, if used maximally, can work wonders. You can browse. You can do a lot of things. Are we together? But that you have this phone does not mean you will maximize the potentials that are wrapped up in this phone. It depends on having a practical experiential knowledge on how to navigate your way through the phone. Did you know that I can receive this phone as a gift with all the potentials locked up in it? And the only thing I'll do with this phone is to make a call. What am I doing? Underutilizing the potential. So someone meets me and I tell the person I've been struggling to send an email. And the person says, why? It should be so easy with this kind of gadget. My ignorance is putting me at the same position as someone who does not even have a phone. This is the lot of many believers. So it is true that they are saved. And somehow, because of poor mentorship largely, they believe that just because you are in Christ now, automatically, the riches of the God life will find expression in spite of what you know. Not so. Not so. Not so. This is why Paul laboriously visited the churches once and again, and his assignment was to mature them. He says, my little children of whom I travail up until now, until Christ be formed in you. If you're learning so far, say amen. So an unsaved believer becomes a believer through the new birth experience, confessing the Lordship of Jesus. The next phase becomes the journey of transformation. So you are a believer, but you are an immature believer, void of knowledge, meaning void of authority, void of knowledge. Your life is only full of potentials, but the experience that comes with the God life cannot be captured in your life. Now, I told you during the conference that from the point of your being saved, now a believer, God introduces three factors to your life. And please lend me your attention. Number one, he introduces the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There is such a thing as an encounter with the person, the office of the Holy Spirit. Even though he plays a role in your being saved, but there is a separate ministry. Jesus himself was with the disciples already. But he said, when the spirit of truth is come, in addition to me, he will come. And when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. Are we learning? So the Holy Spirit is introduced to your life officially. Number two, the word of God, scripture. Romans chapter 20 and verse 32. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to build you up. Are we together? And to give you an inheritance. Watch what Scripture does. It builds you up before delivering an inheritance. It doesn't deliver an inheritance. It builds you up and then it gives you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Those who are sanctified are those who are already saved. But among them, not everybody is built up and not everybody can walk in the experience of their inheritance. Are we together? I commend you to God. I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. John chapter 1 and verse 1 says, In the beginning, not from the beginning. In the beginning um, was the word and then he says the word was with God and then he says the word was God he says the same was with God in the beginning I like verse 3 it says all things were made by him and without him outside of the word was not anything made that was made all things were made by him the word are we together? And without the word, not anything, there was nothing made that was made. This is very powerful. Hebrews chapter 11, 
The Bible says, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for. It calls it the evidence of things not seen. Are we still together? The next verse says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. When you get to verse 3, it puts it beautifully. It says, Through faith we understand that the walls, the aeons were framed by the word of God. The walls were framed by the word of God. Framed by the word of God. So when a believer wants to transition, God introduces the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number two, God introduces the word. These are the tools that sponsor transformation. Number three, God introduces that person to the ministry of a teaching priest. A teaching priest, a teaching priest, a teaching priest. Ephesians chapter 4, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping, the perfecting, the maturing of the saints. For the work of the ministry. Are we together? That we be built until we become of the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ, not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. Quoting from KJV. So my apologies if there are conflicts. It's already filed within my spirit. <laughs> Amen. Are we learning? Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says, And I will give you pastors. Please put it up for us. Jeremiah 3, 15. The value of a teaching priest. And I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. Shepherds according to my heart. And the Bible says they will feed you. They will feed you. They will feed you with knowledge and they will feed you with understanding. Are you receiving knowledge now? Shout amen. Are you receiving understanding now? So it says, I will give you. Every man of God serving the Lord, loving God's people is a gift. I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. And they will feed you with knowledge. They will feed you with understanding. So the unbeliever becomes the believer through the new birth experience. The believer becomes matured, transformed through this tripartite combination of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the word of God. Are we together? Prayer becomes a platform to engage these tripartite forces. Without the word of God, without the Holy Spirit, without the ministry of the teaching priest, prayer does not carry any power on its own. The power that is in prayer is because of the word of God. Without the word of God, prayer becomes a ritual like any other idol practice. What gives power to prayer is its word compliancy. Are we learning now? That means for your prayer life to be effective, you must be sound in scripture. In order of priority, Jesus went to the temple before he went to pray. Because your prayer should be full of that which is written. That's what makes your prayer effectual. The fervent, effectual prayer. Don't even tempt me to go to the area of prayer because most believers say a lot of things and wrap it up in the name of Jesus and believe that they have prayed. Unfortunately, the prayer ministry has rules of engagement. There is such a thing as praying amiss. There is such a thing as being double-minded as you ask. And the Bible already tells you, let that man not think he will receive anything from the Lord. Then it says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that when we ask anything, anything, but according to his will, he heareth us. Your confidence is in the fact that your prayer is word compliant, scripture based, consistent with the will of God. And where the will of God is already written from scripture, you pray the scripture with confidence. But where the will of God is uniquely vague to you concerning a matter, you pray in the spirit until a clear revelation of God's will, which will be consistent from scripture, comes. One of the benefits of praying in the spirit is to help you download the mind of God per concern, per issue. Are we together? 
There's nowhere written in scripture that you should relocate, say, from Dallas to Virginia. It's not written here. What if that's what you want to do? You have to pray in the spirit. And as you pray in the spirit, the Holy Ghost has the unique ability to search the mind of God and to reveal to the saints that which is consistent with God's will. You're learning so far, say amen. amen. So when you get to the point of growth and maturity through transformation, I taught you, the next step becomes empowerment. And let me emphasize that the value of empowerment the value of empowerment is that it comes upon a life that is transformed, a life that is matured. A life that is transformed, a life that is matured. And like you've heard me say, the oil will always reflect the size of the vessel carrying it. If the pot is small, the oil will look small. When she went to the prophet, the prophet said no. The oil is not the issue. It's the container. The vessel carrying the oil is small. And so it makes the oil look small. It says go and borrow vessels. Expand your capacity. Grow in the spirit. Borrow not a few. And the Bible says as soon as she started expanding, the oil grew to match the vessels. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Now, I told you that once you become empowered by the Spirit, your name changes. It doesn't mean you are not a believer. You are still a believer, but there is an increase, an elevation, an upgrade in the Spirit. Okay? So, the believer now transforms to be a witness. It is at the point of being a witness, God can send you. He can send you to stand to defend His purposes doesn't matter whether in ministry as we know it or in business or in family career now you are beyond just a believer you are beyond just an infant you are beyond transformed you are beyond empowered he can send you and back you it is at that point you become truly useful to God's program if you followed everything shout amen, amen. right now but my concern this um, at this service is not just to serve the purposes of God but I want to teach you that God wants you to live a victorious life whilst you serve him did you get that God does not just want you to serve him living a defeated life there are many believers who are serving the Lord sincerely serving in church living for Jesus standing for Jesus but the victory that is in Christ is hardly seen in their lives this is my assignment to show you that it is possible to serve God whilst manifesting unquestionable dominion unquestionable dominion unquestionable dominion that looks like a prophetic word for someone unquestionable dominion dominion in your relationships dominion in your finances dominion over your body are we together and there are principles so are you ready to learn mm. thank you Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord John chapter 15 and verse 8 most believers do not know why God insists that their lives bear fruit. Please look up. If you do not understand the intent behind God's insistence for your fruitfulness, you may not partner with him in making that happen. So we have several believers who the issue of fruitfulness and advancement and progress for many of them uh, they, they don't give it the passion and the aggression enough because they do not know that there is a dimension of God's glory that cannot be revealed until you bear fruits did you get that there is a dimension of the glory of God that cannot be revealed until you bear fruit so John chapter 15 and verse 8 says hearing is my father glorified hearing is my father glorified by this is my father glorified it says when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples kjv would tell us here is my hearing is my father glorified when you bear much fruit that means when you produce results please look at me spiritual results financial results when you make progress spiritually 
when you advance in life and destiny and in the spirit god is glorified god is glorified did you get that that means when you live a life void of sickness void of um um all of these bodily infirmities god is glorified say amen, amen. when you are not behind on your finances and you're making progress enough to take care of your family and the kingdom god is glorified say amen, amen. when you have quality relationships your spouse your children and things are working relationally god is glorified when you are growing in your mind and scaling heights even in your professional career are we together god is glorified someone shout be glorified. be glorified one more time say be glorified. be glorified so it's important for you to know that god's glory the revelation of god's glory upon the earth depends on the results produced by and from and through the saints the the glorification of the christ upon the earth depends on the results that we produce if we refuse to produce results it will look like god lied our results bring validations to his claims. I hope this is making someone dissatisfied this morning. Ah, so he's glorified when I produce results, extraordinary results. He's glorified when I walk in dominion. He's glorified when I scale heights in business, I scale heights in ministry. That means if you were Satan, how would you stop the saints from bringing glory to God? By attacking their potential for productivity. Attacking their potential, it can be through, uh, by plaguing their health, by destroying their mind. You see the reason why we pray over the sick is beyond showing that a man is anointed. We are remedying something Satan is doing to God's creation. You see why we speak promotion, why we release the grace for favor? Because the higher you rise, look at me. How did Daniel bring glory to the name of the Lord? Because he stood out, result, he was exalted. And the more he was exalted, the Lord was glorified in Babylon. Did you see that now? When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were exalted, it brought great glory to the name of the Lord. How were God's people preserved in Egypt when Joseph was exalted? If Joseph were still a prisoner, most likely Jacob and all the sons would have died eventually because there was famine in the land. It was his influence that helped preserve them as a covenant people living in Egypt. Are we learning? So God is glorified when we produce results. John chapter 16 and verse 15. John 16 15 and verse 16 it says you have not chosen me john 16 15 you have not chosen me okay i flipped it john 15 16 my apologies 15 16 john you have not chosen me but i have chosen you the bible says and ordained you someone say i am ordained the word ordained doesn't just mean to pour oil on you it means to legitimize your operation so that your function is not regarded as illegal are we together if i fake a police badge right now and place it upon my chest and try to stop someone when he, by investigation if they discover that these were illegal i've not been authorized i've not been ordained to serve in dallas as a policeman the consequence is that i will go to jail so if god does not legitimize your operation the realm of the spirit will not respect your words no. so you will hear demons say jesus i know paul i know <laughs> but who are you he didn't say what are you saying who are you the problem is not your words your identity identify yourself before i take your words seriously Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, we are his workmanship. The Bible says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I hope you love the word of God in America. Yeah. I'm quoting a lot of scripture. That's how we grow. We don't grow by a lot of stories and jumping around. We grow by sitting to learn methodically. Yeah. Now, there's a place for excitement in church, don't get me wrong, but um, now. 
you build stamina when you invest in the word you rise from that experience and you are given a gift through transformation the manifestation of that gift is what we call authority exousia exousia is manifesting the power of god authority on account of knowledge on account of knowledge someone is rising right now because after this service you will speak to principalities and powers they didn't obey you last week but sorry for them sorry for them because from this week in the name that is above all names you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you you shall decree over families and it shall be established unto you hallelujah please sit there's no superstition as far as the faith life is concerned if you are bankrupt of knowledge I think it was Dave who was speaking here and he said the ignorant believer he was quoting me is also a defeated believer you can be defeated even as a believer and many have been defeated unfortunately many have been so defeated they live in that realm but the Bible says the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for your light is come you don't arise because time has passed uh -uh. you arise because your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light hmm. are we learning may you be sound in scripture for someone by this teaching God is shaking off a lot of laziness spiritually do I sound harsh God is shaking off a lot of laziness spiritually so that you can stay with the word and build stamina build capacity in the spirit in the name of Jesus the son of the living God and so it's hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord welcome again viewers welcome our subscribers we love you so much the Lord bless you for staying tuned to this time watching this particular video from God's servant Apostle Joshua Selman and on this platform Reflector Hub TV as we all know Reflector Hub TV is aimed at the conformity of God's people to the image of the Christ seeing that um, the conformity of us of men of all men on this platform and beyond become that of the Christ and so the picture of which we are portraying is to see that the Christ is being revealed in and through our lives and thank God for giving us such a wonderful and a precious vessel like Apostle Joshua Selman and cut across all uh, the, um, the, 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 the body of Christ different uh, powerful men of God that God is raising in our time right so but then thank God for a, a, a man of God like Apostle Joshua Selman whom God is using so much to be a blessing to us not just to you our viewers but also to us too as well on our organization reflector hub global all right so we bless god so much and the aim of all of this is to see that our life become that of the christ right so uh, thank you for staying tuned to this time watching this video um, being a blessing um, through the media platform right so um the scripture rightfully said that um a man called elijah was a man of like passion but that elijah did something that made him outstood during his time of living. The Bible said that he prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly. And I believe so much that this prayer you've just received right now from God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, and even our, our viewers, as you are watching this video, you are also partaking in the prayer. All right? It is not just to just pray. The Bible said to pray earnestly that the effectual prayer of the righteous man is said it availeth much. So it means that when you pray effectively, um, just like how Elijah did, he said he was a man of like passion. It means he was a man just like us, all right? But that he did something extraordinary that made his life turn from being just ordinary to become an extraordinary life. And this is what Elijah did that made him outstood during his time. And the Bible said that he prayed earnestly, he prayed earnestly, and then rain came down from the heavens, and then there was enough to eat and to drink. And this is what the blessings of God can do. Imagine a man prayed and rain come down. If you, it means that if you also can pray, 
you can turn things around in your life. If you also can pray, you can change that hard situation. If you also can pray, you can also be a blessing to others. If you also can pray, you can open your heavens and cause rain to come down. If you also can pray, you can command your day by just doing that prayer. It is just a simple practice you do every day, every day, every day like that. And as soon as and as, and as much as you continue doing that, you find out that everything around your life begins to turn, everything begins to work for good, for better, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for staying tuned with us. The Lord bless you so much. The Lord bless you so much. The Lord bless you for us. Um, if you're a new uh, viewer on this channel, Reflect Up TV would advise you to please subscribe to this channel click on the subscribe button right there and like this video so that others who have not seen this video would also see it right and then drop a comment in the comment section below we would love to hear from you guys your thoughts about this video right and and share your testimony with, with, with us on the comment section also we would like to share your testimony with the world and to also let the world know that god is still in the business of performing miracles god is in the business of doing of changing the lives of people by the special grace of god all right the lord bless you um see you in our next video we love you so much for reflect up tv we love you so much and the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ thank you